Hey guys, Schweib here. I just upgraded to the latest and the greatest 2021 MacBook Pro 14 inch from my 2010 MacBook Pro 13 inch. I still have my 2010 MacBook Pro and it truly served me well. But it wasn't easy. I had to maintain it. Throughout the lifetime I upgraded the RAM and eventually I got a 512GB of SSD storage. Both the new RAM and the SSD was a major upgrade, which made it possible for me to keep using it throughout college. However, when it came down to performance and speed, it all relied on the Intel i3 chip, and it's definitely outdated. In short, while I was able to get my work done, the laptop was just slow. So you may be wondering, why didn't I just upgrade sooner? I have been meaning to for years now, I had saved up throughout college and was ready to upgrade, however, Apple was constantly disappointing me. First they took out all the ports, and I didn't like the touch bar, and I heard mixed reviews about their keyboard. And finally now, the October 2021 announcement, we finally have the MacBook Pro with all its ports back. And so now, with all that background out of the way, let's get right into the unboxing. Specs. 16 gigs unified memory, 512 SSD, 14 inch MacBook Pro. We are going to open it up. Here we have it, here's the Mac. It does feel a little heavy. Premium. Ooh, build quality, you can feel it. I'm gonna have it here for now, and just see what else is in the box. We have the Apple, the manuals, the stickers, hopefully it should be in here. The manual, great guide, I believe these are the stickers, these are the actual pro stickers, have it here, and I believe the rest is just the box. <coughs> the charging brick here, let's see. It should be the, this is the 67 watt USB type C power adapter. And then we have the actual cable. Very satisfying. It's loading up. Wow. Notice a big difference already. My first impressions. I love the fact that they brought all the ports back. I have been waiting over eight years for this. They have three lightning bolt, four ports, HDMI 2.0, SD card slot, and MagSafe is back for charging. All new curved design matching with the latest iPhones and overall OS design framework for macOS Monterey. 
Unlike my 2010 MacBook Pro on which you could literally make an omelette, this MacBook Pro is completely silent and doesn't get hot at all. Personally, when it comes to my day-to-day -day use, I mainly use it for schoolwork, watching movies, listening to music, reading, and or browsing the web. It can handle all that without a blink in performance. When it comes to more complex things like editing videos, photos, coding, and sometimes casually playing the top of the line games like Minecraft, it can handle everything just as smooth. The 14 inch Liquid Retina XDR display is stunning. It has mini LED backlighting and Apple's typical color accurate panels. It can render HDR content with particularly high brightness and contrast ratios. In addition to ProMotion technology, which has a refresh rate up to 112 Hz for smooth scrolling through pages of websites and fluid graphics. I can actually see a major difference since I am coming for the 2010 MacBook Pro. Let's talk about the notch. It's really not a problem. When you are actually using the laptop for like 99% of the time, you don't notice it at all. The only time you notice it is if you were just on desktop staring at your laptop doing absolutely nothing. When you open and start using an application, the notch is out of your way. Watching movies, for example, it blends right into the top bezel, completely unnoticeable. I'm glad Apple finally decided to take out the touch bar. I was never really a fan. I personally didn't like the idea, but I do see how it could be useful. But, you know, physical buttons are just better. The Magic Keyboard is magical. And it's nice to see the Touch ID power button for signing in and accepting software installations. It really makes it a bit faster for those of us with long passwords. I hated having to type my entire password every time just to install an application. Overall, the keyboard is very satisfying. I could feel each complete click landing as I wrote the script for this video. One of my close friends asked if it's fast if the new 2021 MacBook Pro is fast. So to test just how fast it is, we are going to open some of the major applications all at once and see how fast it can open them. To test just how fast it is, we're going to open five applications that we know are performance heavy that used to take forever to open on my 2010 MacBook Pro. We're gonna open Photoshop, Adobe Acrobat, GarageBand, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro. We already have Photoshop, GarageBand, Adobe Acrobat, and this is Final Cut Pro. We are just waiting for Adobe Premiere Pro. And there we have it. It took just around 30 seconds to open some of the major performance heavy applications. So this is a good indication of just how fast the new MacBook Pros are. Throughout my experience of using the new 2021 MacBook Pro, it's so fast, it's actually too fast, which doesn't seem like a problem and it definitely is not a problem. However, I have found myself opening an application on accident just because I clicked too fast. So maybe I wanted to open Spotify, but the Spotify app is right next to YouTube. So I accidentally clicked on YouTube and YouTube is opening up. So now I have to open, wait for YouTube to open up so I can close it. But you know, as I said earlier, it's really not a problem, but it's kind of ridiculously fast. As for the pros, the new M1 Pro chip is powerful. The display is stunning, audio quality, truly immersive. The keyboard is magical. And the greatest pros of all time, all the ports are finally back. As for the cons, Macs in general have never been known for gaming, and that still holds true for the new MacBook Pros. In addition, it's super expensive, and it's definitely made for a particular type of users who need that power and performance with portability. When it comes to the neutral things, the notch really isn't a problem, but I can see how it could be one for some. And when it comes to the HDMI port, it's not the latest and the greatest. It's HDMI 2.0, which will do the job for the most cases, but it's still a limitation. In conclusion, this is a powerhouse, a beast of performance, all thanks to the new M1 Pro chip 
bringing back all the ports, the new design, and overall, build quality that truly makes it different from rest of the competition. 